Jacob Fatu has debuted in WWE. The son of the Tonga kid and cousin to Solo Sokoa and the Usos made his long-anticipated WWE debut on Friday SmackDown, aligning with the bloodline in an attack on Cody Rhodes, Randy Orton, and Kevin Owens. Cody Rhodes versus Solo Sokoa was the advertised SmackDown main event, but the match quickly ended in a DQ as Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa jumped Cody Rhodes. Randy Orton and Kevin Owens ran in for the save, but Jacob Fatu's debut gave the Bloodline the numbers advantage and the babyfaces were laid out. Fatu posed with the Bloodline to close the show, doing the one finger in the air pose alongside Solo Sokoa, Tonga, and Loa. The 32-year-old Jacob Fatu is a 12-year veteran of the independent scene. A robbery conviction and a stint in jail as a teenager was often cited as the reason why WWE had not signed Fatu in spite of his lineage and heritage making him a natural fit for the Bloodline storyline. Fatu has been signed to WWE since at least April, according to multiple sources. He finished up an MLW run in March. In November of 2023, just a couple of months ago, I had the opportunity to talk to Jacob Fatu at a local indie show in Los Angeles in which we spoke about the Bloodline storyline and whether or not he would be headed to WWE. Here's what he had to say at the time. Man, they've been in there putting in work. I mean, we're talking about three years straight with the storyline, but um, I'm a fan overall. I'm a fan, and the crazy thing is, Just because I'm related to them, when I watch, I think I know what's going on. Then they always hit us with that twist. So overall, man, they're doing good. Shout out to the Bloodline. Shout out to Usanim. You know, Fatus, Anawais, we're really all one family. But uh, I'm excited. I'm a fan. At the end of the day, I'm like this, though, uh, watching, barbecuing at my house. So it's real good to see, real good to see. So I'm curious, do you think we're ever going to see Jacob Fatu creep up in that storyline? Do you you think it's happening? In due time. In due time. I mean, it could be there. It could be anywhere. It could be anywhere. But in due time, man, like I said, leave it in God's hands. And if it happens, it happens. If it don't, I'll still be watching them like this. You know what I'm saying? So overall, um, very, very proud of my family. Very proud of Solo, what he's done. Very proud of the twins. Very proud of Roman. Um, Just very proud of my family, period. You know? That's it, right? What's been your favorite moment for them, whether it be for Roman Reigns, whether it be for the Usos, for it Solo? Wrestle, it was WrestleMania, Saturday and Sunday. To see their main event, you know, when I seen Solo walk out with Roman, like, getting goosebumps, like, just tears in my eyes, man, just uh, just seeing the main event. That was the highlight, like, for me, seeing them. Not only that, it happened in California, in L.A., so it was good, man. It was real good. I'm about to cry right now, talking about them right now. <laughs> Shout out to the boys, though, Us. Moving on to our next story. The CM Punk-Drew McIntyre feud continued on Friday's WWE SmackDown with Drew McIntyre laying out a bloodied CM Punk. CM Punk kicked off Friday's SmackDown in the Allstate Arena in Illinois with a promo that began with a focus on Drew McIntyre. Paul Heyman interrupted CM Punk and the two hugged in the ring as Heyman warned Punk to leave the arena and take Heyman with him before the bloodline attacked. The bloodline entered, threatened Punk, but Cody Rhodes made the save. Later in the show, CM Punk was laid out by Drew McIntyre off screen. A dramatic reveal involved a garage door rolling up to show Drew standing over the bloody Punk. Drew McIntyre carried Punk to the stage, then ripped off a bracelet with the name of Punk's wife, AJ, and dog Larry before leaving. CM Punk was stretchered to an ambulance, and the commentary team stated that he would spend the night in the hospital and that fans should stay tuned to WWE social media channels for updates. Drew was also announced for this Monday's Raw one week after an angle where Drew McIntyre quit WWE. It would appear as though CM Punk has still not been medically cleared to return after surgery to repair a torn triceps. And that stretcher job keeps the CM Punk Drew McIntyre issue alive as CM Punk continues to rehab the injury. Moving on, three more wrestlers have qualified for WWE's Money in the Bank ladder matches. Andrade and Carmelo Hayes won qualifying matches on Friday's SmackDown to punch their tickets to the men's Money in the Bank ladder match set for the July 6th pay-per-view. Chelsea Green was victorious in the women's qualifying bout on Friday's SmackDown to earn her spot in the women's ladder match. Andrade defeated Kevin Owens and Grayson Waller in a triple threat to qualify, while Hayes scored a roll-up pin on Randy Orton in a triple threat also involving Tamatanga to secure his place at the pay-per-view. 
Carmelo Hayes and Andrade joined Jey Uso as the first three of six qualifiers for the men's ladder match, while Chelsea Green joins EO Sky in the women's match. More qualifying matches will continue on Monday's Raw with Chad Gable versus Braun Strowman versus Bronson Reed and Lyra Valkyra versus Shayna Baszler versus Kyrie Sane. On to some more news. On-air personality Kayla Braxton will be wrapping up with WWE following next Friday's SmackDown from Madison Square Garden in New York City. The popular backstage interviewer revealed the news on social media Saturday morning, effusing praise for WWE and several people like Michael Cole, Paul Heyman, Paul Levesque, Nick Khan, and others in her comments about why she was leaving. She already has her next role lined up, but did not reveal it in her post. She credited a move to Los Angeles as offering her new opportunities that would further utilize the skills that she gained while working with WWE. The 33-year-old signed with WWE in 2016, beginning as both a ring announcer and an on-screen personality in NXT. Eventually moving into a backstage interviewer role, she moved up to the main roster in August 2019 and added co-host duties on The Bump and other WWE shows during her run. Switching gears to some ratings conversations, Wednesday night's episode of AEW Dynamite averaged 502,000 viewers on TBS, a big 26.3% drop from last week. It's the third lowest audience total in the history of the show and the lowest Dynamite has ever done on a Wednesday night. Dynamite finished third on the cable charge with a 0.16 rating in the 18 of 49 demo. That's down 30.4% from last week and is the lowest number in the history of the show. There was no major sports competition on the night, although the show did go head to head with the College World Series on ESPN and Olympic Trials on NBC, which topped the cable and network charts respectfully. Dynamite also went against a Kendrick Lamar concert streaming on Amazon Prime that took place on the Juneteenth holiday. As compared to the same week in 2023, Dynamite was down 44.4% in total viewers and down 51.5% in the 18 of 49 demo. Those are the largest year over year drops the show has ever done. This marks the 31st straight week that Dynamite has declined year over year in total viewers. As for Tuesday night's WWE NXT, it averaged 724,000 viewers on the USA Network, up 0.8% from last week. It's the third highest audience total the show has done so far this year and the second highest since the New Year's Evil special on January 2nd. NXT topped the cable TV charts with a 0.26 rating in the 18 a 49 demo. That's up 18.2% from last week and ties the highest rating the show has done in that category since December 2019. NXT was the sixth highest rated show on all of television on Tuesday and was third among non-sports programming. The strong rating comes despite the fact that NXT went head-to-head -head with Game 5 of the NHL Stanley Cup Final which topped all of TV. NXT featured a number one contenders battle royal that included TNA wrestlers Joe Hendry and Frankie Kazarian. Though they weren't announced in advance, it was teased that some of the battle royal entrants would be from different locker rooms. As compared to the same week in 2023, NXT's overall viewership was down 6.3%, while its 18 to 49 rating was up 13%. So the audience continues to skew much younger this year. This week's show was up 10.4% in overall viewers and up 36.8% in 18 to 49 as compared to the recent average. That's a wrap for this episode of the latest. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and stay tuned here to F4W Online for more pro wrestling content.